Hi everyone, my name is Karen. This is my channel Rather Be Reading and today I'm bringing to you a recent reads video. So it has actually been two weeks since I last filmed a recent reads video. Um, I didn't film one last weekend because I was away um, in Melbourne last weekend to see the Harry Potter and the Cursed Child play, which was so good. I'm so glad I got to see it. It was really, really good. Um, I was going to do a vlog of that weekend and like I did do some vlogging, but it's just real shit content. Like it's not good, so I'm not going to post it. So I thought I'd mention it here that I did go see that last weekend. So we have two weeks worth of books to talk about. So I read 11 books over the past two weeks, um, which is good, not as high as my usual numbers, partly because I was away for a few, for three days in Melbourne, so I wasn't doing as much reading, like, while I was away. Um, so yeah, not as much reading necessarily as always, but 11 books is still really good. So let's jump straight in and talk about all 11 books that I have read over the past two weeks. Oh, and we will touch on the Newt's Readathon at the end of this video. I'll go through all of the... Um, Newt's exams that I've managed to check off um, since I last checked in with you guys. So the first book that I completed since the last recent reads video was called The Promise by Teresa Driscoll. This is a um, e-arc that I received in exchange for an honest review from NetGalley. It's a thriller. It basically is the story of there were these three girls who went to boarding school together and we know that there was some event that took place um, that they all swore like not to talk about um and hence the promise um and they're now we're following them as adults it's like 25 years later or something like that and the school is being destroyed like uh it's being torn down and so two of the girls are still friends as adults but they have become estranged from the third woman and basically they're trying to track down this third woman because the school being torn down could bring up things related to their secret. Um, and so uh, it just basically follows that story. I didn't super love this one. It was just okay. It was kind of dull, if I'm being honest. Um, but it was still like enjoyable enough to like keep you reading to find out what was going on. The whole secret around, well, the whole secret when that was revealed, I will say that it's not necessarily what I had considered, um, but it wasn't that, like, exciting <laughs> of a secret either. It was just kind of like, oh, okay, that's what we're, like, talking about? Okay. Um, so it was okay. I just thought that um, I didn't really connect to any of the characters overly much. Like, it was just okay. I ended up giving it three stars. I then read a book called Here and Now and Then by Mike Chen. I listened to this on audio. It was narrated by Carrie Height. This is an adult sci-fi story that is about a man who is a, it's, he's from the future and it is a time travel story. So he is a, in the future works for this like time travel agency um, that stops like time travel crime. And he has traveled back in time to some, I can't remember what year it is, sometime in the 1990s. I think it is when he gets stuck in the 1990s and it has now been I think 14 years and he's been stuck in the past for 14 years and in that time he has he remembers that he's from the future but he doesn't remember details like he doesn't remember his life it's all started to fade away um he has these episodes um as a result of being a time traveler because he's not his body and stuff is not working the way it's supposed to because he's not in the correct time. Um, but in this time, he has got a wife, he's got a daughter. When someone from the agency that he worked for in the future tracks him down and says, okay, like we're ready to take you back to the future. Um, but obviously this causes a lot of complications because he's got a wife and he's got a daughter and so on and so forth. But he also has a life in the future that he doesn't remember. Um, I actually really enjoyed this book. It was, yes, it can get a bit e confusing with any kind of time travel series when you think about <laughs> how time travel works. It can really start to hurt your head. But I just, I'm someone who could just let that go and just kind of go with it. Like a lot of my, I actually really enjoy time travel stuff. Like whenever there's time travel stuff in anything, you just can't think about it in too much detail or it will just hurt your head and you'll just be going around in circles and circles with your questions for forever. 
but I thought it was a really fun fun plot. I really liked all of the relationships and all of the complications around that. I found it all really believable. I really enjoyed all of that. I just thought it was like a lot of fun. Um, I ended up giving it 3.75 stars. I then read Marked in Flesh by Anne Bishop. This is the fourth book in the Others series. Can't talk too much about this because it is book four in the series. Um, everything that we've kind of been building to comes to a head in this one, even though there's another book after this, you get most of the climax of that story of the like overarching plot in this book, um, which I liked, but it wasn't my favorite in the series or anything, but I did still enjoy it. I've enjoyed this series. I end up giving that one 3.5 stars. I then read Explosive 18 by Janet Ivanovich, book 18 in the Stephanie Plum series. If you haven't been watching my channel, this is a chick lit series that follows a woman named Stephanie Plum who is a bounty hunter, but she's an inept bounty hunter. It's very like comical. Um, you know, she's getting into all kinds of shenanigans and she's not a good bounty hunter. There's a lot of mistakes and a lot of shenanigans that go on. I was pretty frustrated with this book in the series because, so I've mentioned again, but I'll mention it again in case you knew, I mentioned it all the time, that this series has a ongoing love triangle that's been going on since basically like book two or three in the series, and it's still going on. But the thing that I found frustrating about this one is that there is a big thing that's happened within the love triangle that's happened between books 17 and 18 that keeps getting referenced as like this thing that happened, but we didn't actually get to see it. And for the first part of the book, you don't actually know what it is. And then they finally say, well, this is what happened. But I was like, 18 books in the series and then something finally, like some kind of like confrontation kind of happens and we don't get to see it. Like, I just think that's really shitty. <laughs> like, as a reader, I want to see that. I've been reading, I'm invested in this love triangle for 18 books. It's the reason I'm still reading the series because I want to know how the freaking love triangle turns out. So for you to then have this like big thing that happens and to not show the reader, that really pisses me off. Apart from that, the book was enjoyable. Yes, this one was probably a little, they're all ridiculous. This one was maybe a little bit touch higher on the ridiculous scale for me it was still really enjoyable I gave it 3.25 stars I didn't hate it it was probably would have been a 3.5 star but I knocked a quarter star off because I was real pissed off about that whole like off-screen situation with the love triangle um I thought I should mention that at this point I finished this notebook this was my notebook that I was I keep a notebook where I write down all the books that I'm reading um and I completed this one this was just like a snake black gray snake skin it's got get it done and then the ribbon that kind of goes around that keeps it closed is like this gold metallic and I started a new notebook I'm now working on this one. Oh, I don't even know if you can see that it says let's be mermaids forever adults never which is just great so <laughs> just thought I'd mention that as a fun little fact so the next book that I completed um was etched in bone by Anne Bishop this is the fifth and final book in the others series kind of there is a spin-off series i avoided reading the synopsis for the book that comes after this because i didn't want to accidentally spoil myself but i'm pretty sure it is completely it's set in this world but none of the characters mentioned in that synopsis are even in this series that i can recall so i'm pretty sure it's taking place in the same world you'll probably get mentions of characters and events that took place in this but it is separate i'm pretty sure so i'm not going to read that straight away because only the first two books in that are out yet. I don't know if it's just two or if there's going to be more, but I only own the first one because the second one is like $45 and I'm not paying that much money. So anyway, I will read that eventually because I do really like this world. Um, so this is the fifth and final book. I really like that how I mentioned that in the fourth book, we got kind of the climax. In this, we get a lot of, this kind of does have its own plot to it, but we also get all the aftermath of the battle, what's happening in the world, how are they going to move on from everything that happened in book four. I really like that because in a lot of series you get the big climax and then it's just like, okay, and the book ends and it's like, how are you going to move on from that? Whereas a lot of this is about how, what's going to happen in this world as a result of everything that's happened in the series so far, which I did really, really enjoy. Um, I should mention as well that like I've said, about this series so far, this has a very slow burn romance. The romance is not... A focus it's very 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 subplot um but it is kind of in there and it's really nice because it's not overpowering the story at all and it is super super slow burn so if you're looking for something really like subtle slow burn romance then this is a series that i would definitely check out 
Um, I did really enjoy this final installment. I gave this final installment 3.75 stars. I then listened on audio to Modern Romance by Aziz Ansari, um, which is narrated by Aziz Ansari himself. This is a non-fiction book about modern romance. So Aziz Ansari is a comedian and he just looks at modern romance and how romance and dating and all of that has changed kind of over time. And I actually found this really interesting and I really liked that there's actually a lot of research that has gone into this book. Um, Aziz Ansari refers to a lot of different focus groups and all of that that they ran. It's not just him like joking about Tinder and all of that. I mean that is all in there but it is actually based on like research and talking to people from who got together in like the 40s and 50s and talking about how they met their partners and talking about how in the past basically you met someone from the town that you lived in because those were your options and that's how people found their partner was it's just someone that you knew from your neighborhood whereas obviously now in 2019 well this book's prior to 2019 but like in this today's world we have access to so much more people and even with the fact that it's so much more common now like in America where I don't live but it's so much more common over there for like people to go away to college and then to live somewhere different from where you grew up and so it has changed the whole world of like the way that we find hi baby the way that we find our romantic partners and I just thought it was really interesting and like I said it was really funny I liked all of the comedy in there and I just thought it was an interesting book and I gave that 3.75 stars I then read Beyond the Highland Mist by Karen Marie Monning this is a so it's a book that I had to read for one of my goals this year and it's it's basically like Outlander but it's kind of got a paranormal twist to it so it, it follows a woman who is like a modern modern day I think this was published in the 90s modern day woman who is sworn off men and she gets whisked back to 15 14 something like that 16th century Scotland um to be married off to this Scottish like not a king oh I can't think of like what the term is that I'm trying to think of I want to say laird but I don't think that's the right word anyway some kind of Scottish nobleman type of person um and she's from the future so you know she's supposed to be spunky and all of that because you know she's from the future and ugh, it was very and then there is kind of a fairy twist to it kind of that's very subtle but it is kind of in there I really didn't like this book I thought the characters were incredibly two-dimensional I thought that the romance and all that was super cheesy it's very insta lovey there's very much just a focus on the main character like noticing how hot like the main character is or like how all of the men are because apparently every man in Scottish in the six in Scottish in Scotland in the 16th century was you know the hottest thing since forever I was gonna say since sliced bread but did they have sliced bread in the 16th century I don't think they probably did but you know what I'm saying so I just I just didn't enjoy it I thought it was very I didn't think the writing was great it was very over the top in just kind of every manner um and I read a lot of reviews and the reviews of people who didn't like it Met, like there was one review in particular that mentioned that the series gets good because this is a series I think it's eight books the series gets good around book five and I think there might be companion novels too I don't think they necessarily all follow the same set character but like book five was really good and I was like yeah I'm not reading on to get to book five like being good um I won't be continuing on with the series but I did read it uh for my goal this year so um I ended up giving it two stars um I then read a Game for All the Family by Sophie Hanna. So this, if you saw my video that I did a while ago of um, the lowest rated books on my TBR, this was one of them. Um, and I m mentioned that I didn't already, didn't have high expectations for this going in because my friend Michelle had been reading this at one point when we were chatting on Voxer. She had was currently reading this and she was struggling and she was leaving me all kinds of messages about how awful it was. Having said that, I was kind of like, well, maybe I would like it because Sophie Hanna is an author that I've actually read a lot from. She has a psychological thriller series that I really, really enjoy. This, hmm, it has a low rating for a reason, apparently. I didn't like it. So it basically follows this woman who's married with a teenage daughter 
like a young teenage daughter. I think she's like, oh, she might not even be a teenager. They might be like, she might be like 12. No, I think she's 14. I think she's 14. Anyway, she's got a daughter and they have recently moved to a new house. We know that something happened in her life that like made her want them to leave London and move to, I think it's Devon that they moved to. And they moved to this new house. Her daughter starts a new school and we then get intermittent chapters of a story that her daughter is writing for school. So the story's in there. The story's kind of weird. It's got, it's old timey, the story, and it's got like all the character names are like, I can't even remember what the character names are. They're like Perrine and Garnet and Bascom and... Oh, I can't even remember the rest of the character names. They're all really weird character names, so it's that kind of makes it harder to follow as well. And then, so in present day, the daughter comes home from school bereft because her best friend was expelled. And her best friend was expelled, best friend that the mum didn't know anything about, was expelled because uh, she gave him her winter coat and they, the school said that he stole it and they expelled him even though the girl said that he didn't steal it, that she gave it to him. So the mum storms down to the school to like try to sort the situation out. The school says... The school says this situation, sorry, this kid doesn't exist. He never went to the school. They've never heard of him. And it, that's kind of the thing that's going on that kicks off the story in the present day. And then, like I said, you've got this kind of strange story that you're reading as well that the daughter is writing, which is about a girl who murdered someone and then you know that she is also murdered, but you're kind of following how she ends up getting murdered and you're following that story. So it was hard to follow. I kept reading, like I read the whole thing because I was interested to know, I wanted to know what was going on and what was going to happen, what the outcome was going to be. So it did do enough to keep me reading. But then when you get to the end and the whole, everything that happens, I was like, this is just ridiculous. Nothing that happens in this, I believe. Like it's just, anything happened, I was like, this is ridiculous. And like all of the characters are doing things and I'm just like, no sane human is doing these things. So it was just very over the top and kind of crazy and ridiculous. Um, so I didn't love this. I gave it two stars. I then listened on audio to Middle Game by Sean and Maguire, which is narrated on audio by Amber Benson, which is very exciting because Amber Benson is an actress who starred in Buffy the Vampire Slayer. So <laughs> right off my alley. So Middle Game, I listened to 42% of Middle Game previously, like a couple of months ago, and then the audiobook expired and... I had to wait to get it again. It finally came in again and I listened to the whole thing again. Like I listened to the beginning 42% because this is definitely the type of story. It's very complicated where you need to know everything that's going on. And I didn't want to be confused. So I listened from the beginning again. Um, so this is a adult sci-fi fantasy. I would just say kind of sci-fi, I guess. I don't really know to classify. I'm not a professional classifier of books. Um, it basically follows two main characters, Roger and Dodger, who are engineered humans, but they don't know that. They basically think that they're like adopted into these families. They're not, they're not raised together. And then when they're like seven, they start to talk to each other in their minds. And then the story kind of goes from there. I don't really know what else to tell you. It's a very complicated story. The first like hour or two of the audiobook, there's a lot going on and it's kind of confusing. But then once you start to get into the story, I did start to really enjoy myself. I really liked the two characters of Roger and Dodger. I thought they were great characters, really enjoyed it. Like I said, the world is kind of, it's set in our world, but there's other stuff going on. And it's like, parallel universes kind of time travel kind of there's there's a lot going on and I'm saying it could get pretty confusing but I did really like the characters I enjoyed the story am I 100% clear at the end of exactly what happened not necessarily did I enjoy myself yeah I did and if there, a sequel to this came out it's a type of book that doesn't need a sequel but if a sequel did come out I would definitely read that as well um I don't think that this was like the most amazing book that I've ever read. I think partly because I'm not smart enough to get everything that was happening in it, honestly. But I did really enjoy it and I gave it four stars. Uh, the next book that I read was Alice in Zombieland by Gina Show Walter. This is another one that I had to read for one of my challenges. This is like, I didn't, I should have checked what the publication year 
was for this, but I don't know. This is like early to mid 2000s, like YA paranormal. It is billed as being an Alice in Wonderland retelling, but with zombies. Is it though? I don't get how this story is Alice in Wonderland. I thought that this book was set like in another world. Like I thought there was a girl from our world who got sucked into a Wonderland type world that had zombies. That's not what happens in this story. Her name's Alice. And that's kind of where it ends. Yes, there are zombies. So it's set in our world. And I actually really liked the zombies. It's one of the things that I really liked. The way that the zombies are, it's kind of like an infection of your spirit. Kind of? And I think I've never read like about zombies like this. So I did really enjoy that. But I just don't get how it's a Wonderland retelling. Yes, she's kind of like in a different world to our normal world. But it's not, well, she's not in a different world. She's in our world. It just happens that there's zombies. I, I don't get how it's, like, you could, if that's the limits to, like, how this becomes a retelling, then, like, anything could be a retelling. Like, I just, I just don't get how it was a retelling. Anyway, moving on. Uh, the romance is also super cheesy, um, as it's very typical kind of romance. Like, it's your very typical broody, misunderstood, bad boy um, type love interest, which... I'm not hating on it. It's fun. It's enjoyable. I don't think this is the greatest book ever, but I enjoyed it. Um, I'll continue on. Hi, Giles. Once again, Giles has been hiding because my dad was around mowing my lawns and Giles is terrified of, in of anyone. So he's been in my hiding in my wardrobe for the last hour. And now he's made his way out because my dad's been gone for like 30 minutes. So he's deemed it safe to come out from his hiding place. Anyway, so I enjoyed the book. It's not anything amazing. I'll continue on with the series just because it's like fun and I'd like to see where the series goes, but it wasn't amazing. I gave it 3.25 stars. And then the final book that I have read recently was Ordinary People by Diana Evans. It's another book that I listened to on audio. This is narrated by Jennifer Sayang. So this, I felt very like literary person reading this because uh, this is a book that was uh, shortlisted. I don't know if it was shortlisted or if it was just longlisted. I feel like it was shortlisted, but I could be wrong about that, for the Women's Prize um, this past year. Um, and it is a, so it's literary fiction about, it's set in the UK. And it basically, the synopsis says that it follows two couples, which it kind of does, but you definitely focus on one couple more than the other. So two black couples in South London, although one of them doesn't technically live in South London. Um, and it's basically just about their relationships and kind of the deterioration of their relationships honestly i this is the type of book that i say this is why i think that i'm always concerned going into literary fiction because i honestly don't feel like i'm smart enough to like appreciate everything that's going on all of the commentary and everything that's going on in this book it's just it's very slow character kind of more study on people's lives and I, I found to be fair I found all that part is the stuff that I found kind of interesting I like because I found it all really believable I didn't particularly like any of the characters they did a lot of stuff that I didn't like did I think it was believable yes I did they all do things that I'm like I don't agree with what you've done but I can see how you've ended up there and how you've ended up doing what you've done because it happens it's stuff everything that happens in this book is stuff that people have done throughout history like for forever um so yeah i i appreciated it but it's just it wasn't like you know the most enjoyable like fun like type of read i will also say that there's kind of like this weird like paranormal-ish subplot kind of going on where one of the females in one of the couples believes that the house that they're living in is like haunted kind of and that's something that she becomes a little bit obsessed by and I, that was kind of a weird thread to me in there that I thought was a bit weird as well. Um, so I don't know, like this book was okay. I can say, I don't think that I'm the right person to enjoy this type of highbrow literary fiction. I'm just being honest, but I enjoyed it for the most part. Like I said, the, I found it all very believable and the characters and every all situations fairly believable. Um, I ended up giving it three stars. All right, now quickly to touch on the Newt's Magical Readathon. I'm gonna try to get through this quickly because I feel like this video is probably already too long. Um, so I have checked off a number of exams over this past two weeks. So I'm gonna talk about those. So first off, I earned an 
E in Arithmancy, which was the challenge for that, was to read a standalone. For that, I used The Promise by Teresa Driscoll. Um, I also achieved an outstanding in Arithmancy. Um, the challenge for that was to read a book longer than 350 pages. For that, I used Marked in Flesh by Anne Bishop, which was like 489 pages. I also achieved an A in Herbology, which the challenge for that was like, Mandrake, quick, put on your headphones, listen to an audiobook. For that, I used Here and Now and Then by Mike Chen. I also got an Exceeds Expectations in Herbology. The challenge for that was to read a book between 350 and 390 pages. For that, I used Beyond the Highland Mist by Karen Marie Monning, which was 375, so kind of almost bang in the middle. Well, no, not really. Anyway, I also achieved an Exceeds Expectations in History of Magic, which was to read a book with a map. For that, I used, I actually got it here. Etched in Bone by Anne Bishop. All five books in this series had maps in the front of them of like the areas and like in the book that are discussed. So I use that one for that. Uh, next, I got um, and Exceeds Expectations in Muggle Studies, which was to read a book set in our real world. For that, I used Explosive 18 by Janet Ivanovich. I also got an Outstanding in Muggle Studies, which was to read a book by written by a person of colour. For that, I used Modern Romance by Asiz Ansari. Asiz Ansari is um, Indian American. Um, I also have noted down, and I don't know if this one's cheating, but I've noted down that I achieved an A in potions. The challenge for that is it's the Polyjuice Potion Challenge, which is to read a friend's favourite book. So I, for that, have noted in Middle Game by Shauna Maguire because it's Lala from Books and Lala's favourite book that she's read this year so far. She's talked about it a lot on her channel. Are Lala and I friends? No. But I would like to be. So I've noted that in. That's probably cheating, but I noted it down. So that's all I've checked off. So in terms of my career for becoming a chance professor, the thing that I still needed to do the last time was get an A and an E in Defense Against the Dark Arts. I still haven't done either of those. Everything else is I'm well ahead on, um, but I still need to do those. So the challenge to get an A in Defense Against the Dark Arts is to um, read a book that's black under the dust jacket, which segues me in nicely to my current read because I'm currently working on this challenge because I'm reading uh, The Fun House by Dean Kuntz. I don't have the dust jacket. It's in my bedroom, but you can see that it's black under the dust jacket. This is a reread for me. I'm actually almost finished this. I am on page 269 and this book's only got 308 pages. So I'll be done with this very shortly. Um, so this is my current read. First of everything I've done in the Newt's Magical Readathon. That's everything I've read over the past two weeks. I would love to chat with you guys in the comments down below. If you've got any thoughts on any of the books that I've been reading, or if you'd like to chat about what you've been reading recently, or about how you're doing in Newt's Magical Readathon, if you're participating, anything you want to chat about, I'd be happy to chat about in the comments down below. Please like this video if you liked it. Please subscribe if you want to see more of my channel. That is all I have for this video today. Bye, guys.